from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Ayotunde Balogo. Hello and welcome tonight. More buildings to go down in Lagos Island, declares Governor Babaji de Somolu, as he vows to go after those flouting safety regulations in the business district area, says action is unacceptable. It's yet another twist in rivers politics as former Governor Peter Odili backs Governor Fubara, declares him political leader of the state. Residents of Imohua Council pitch tent with former Governor Nyesa Mwiki. And the Minister of Power apologizes to Nigerians over his comments accusing them of wasting energy by keeping their freezers and air conditioners running when not at home. And on business news tonight, OPEC's latest report shows Nigeria's crude oil production fell for the second straight month to 1.23 million barrels per day in March. On Sports News tonight, the Premier League will introduce semi-automated offside technology next season in the hope of reducing the time it takes to make VAR decisions. Abuja, the nation's capital, hope rises for displaced persons in over 100 communities in Plateau State as the government moves to resettle them in their ancestral homes. And in international news from London, President Joe Biden has promised Israel ironclad support amid fears that Tehran could launch reprisals for an attack that killed senior Iranians. Governor Babaji de Sonwolu of Lagos State is talking tough. He says more buildings will be brought down in Lagos Island following what he describes as spate of infractions in the business district area. Meanwhile, the governor has ordered the indefinite closure of the popular Dusumu market after Tuesday's fire that gutted the area and mandated relevant agencies in the state to go after those flouting safety regulations in the commercial hub. He said this during his visit to the site of the inferno, which affected about 14 buildings. Our correspondent, Dari Do, brings us an update. Over 48 hours after, it is still a life sight here at Dosmu Market. The smoke, although not as heavy as that of the day one, was still filters in the air. With firemen continuing with the damping down. Governor Babajide Sonwolu is making his first visit to this site since this particular incident, but well, this is a familiar scene, especially at this market. The governor announced that some of the traders who lost valuables in the inferno will be provided some relief. What I have seen here is what could have been prevented. We don't have a full report yet, so I don't want to speculate. For initial report that came to us was just gross carelessness. I will sit around and speak to the other stakeholders and hear how, what amount of support, what level of comfort, what level of um, um, support will be rendered to some of um, 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 the people that have been affected and we will try and see how we settle them very quickly and see how we can get them back you know, on their feet. But this is an incident too often, very, very condemnable and very unacceptable. The governor is worried that residents and traders here have continually flouted safety regulations, mandating state agencies to attend to these issues without delay. The market all around will be closed today, tomorrow, until when we're able 
to do a full assessment and to do a proper cleanup of this entire area. I want to say without any out of doubt that some other buildings are still going to go down. This is totally unacceptable. We will not allow a few people, a few people who will not comply with our rules, with our laws, to put the lives of others in danger. Fiscal planning, planning authorities, LAPCA, are going to be having a difficult time with me. And when they have a difficult time with me, you will know they will come on the street. At least 14 structures were destroyed in this inferno. It is one with the highest number of buildings affected in one incident in Lagos Island. The closest was a similar fire outbreak at the nearby Balogun market in 2020, where more than eight buildings were affected. Dari Idu, Channel's Television News. Over now to Rivers, where there seems to be another twist of events in the state's politics, with former Governor Peter Odili endorsing Governor Simnalai Fubara, praising him for defending the interest of the people. Dr. Odili, who was the state governor between 1999 and 2007, said that Governor Fubara, having secured his election both through the ballot and the courts, is now the political leader of River State. The former governor was speaking at the commissioning of a primary health care center donated by his Palmo Foundation in Indoni, his hometown in Ogba Egbemandoni local government area. For standing up to your oath of office to defend the interest of all rivers people in accordance with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have done that standing on firm ground and with the strength and courage of a lion. We are, we are, we are proud of you. Politics is over. It is now time for governance and you have hit the ground running. You have touched the critical sectors in less than one year in office. Our people say I should tell you to stand firm with the president, align with his positive policies, and carry reverse people to the engine room of government in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For those who have not bothered to pay attention, if you look at the map of Nigeria, the entire map of Nigeria is sitting on River State. When River State coughs, Nigeria will catch cold. So regard, regard your office as key and vital. Don't look back. It is not a matter of age. It is a matter of your people are with you. And they've asked me to tell you that you are the political leader of River State. Who are local government area of River State have declared the FCT minister, Nyesa Mwike, the leader of the PDP in River State. Now, the sons and daughters of the council made their position known during a stakeholders meeting at the Emohua Council headquarters. They also reaffirmed their support for President Bola Tinubu and thanked him for appointing Mr. Wike as FCT minister. This is a gathering of politicians traditional rulers, women groups, as well as other stakeholders of equity descent at the MOHA Local Government Area Council of River State. They are here for a meeting and their aim is to restate their support for the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyesum Wiki. We are behind you. Leading the group is the local government chairman, Chidi Lloyd, who in his speech refers to Mr. Wiki as the undisputed leader of the PDP in the state. We are here to renew our commitment to the renewed hope agenda and to thank the president for finding one of our own, our leader, the leader.
leader of the People's Democratic Party in River State, Chief Honorable Barrister, is the one here to greet him. For finding him worthy to be appointed as the first Southerner, the first Southerner to sit as Minister for the Federal Capital Territory. Interestingly, the former chief of staff, who is also a commissioner in the current administration, as well as a member of the State House of Assembly, re-echo Mr. Lloyd's statement about the status of the minister of the FCT in River State PDP. It is ridiculous and funny to see that instead of people focusing on governance, focusing on delivering and discharging the responsibility with which they sought for vote and they were voted for, all you hear every day is that Wicked did not do this and Wicked did not do that. Is Wicked see the governor of River State? I stand with Chief Barrister Ezekwonge, so Wicked did not do that. I stand with Chief Barrister Ezekwonge, so Wicked did not do that. So, my people, I want to thank you for your show. At the end of the exercise, a communique stating the position of the assembly is read out. That we urge Mr. President to beware of certain politicians who are currently parading themselves in River State as supporters of the Tinibu administration. We are aware that these politicians were supporters of a presidential candidate with whom they maligned and disparaged the personality of Mr. President during the 2023 campaigns and elections. These politicians have gathered under a fair political platform to destabilize and make the system. This is yet another in a series of ongoing political battles between supporters of the former governor and his successor, Siminalai Fubara, in their political face-off. Charles, Upper Room, Channels Television News. Staying with political matters, one of the governorship aspirants on the platform of the APC in Nondo State, Senator Jimmo Ibrahim, says he has a 10-point development agenda if elected as governor. Mr. Ibrahim said this in Undo City, the headquarters of Undo West local government area, where he visited to converse for votes ahead of the forthcoming primary election of the party. The leadership of the Ashiori movement is meeting with the registered members of the APC in all the 12 political wards in Ondo West local government area of Ondo State. The meeting is all about convincing the eligible members of the APC to cast their votes for Senator Jimmy Ibrahim in the party's governorship primary. <laughs> Speaking with Channels Television, Senator Ibrahim expresses delight in the turnout of the members for the meeting. He also speaks on his 10-point development agenda for Ondo State if elected as governor of the state. I talked about the bitumen in the bitumen in the, in the Agbabu, Ibotako, Derili, Udiai, where we have the $6 billion bitumen deposited in that place, and we are not doing anything with it, and we don't have roads. So if you look at the Renew Hope agenda, it's still up about using these natural resources, you know, to affect human uh, capacity to develop. And that's what we are trying to do, to create wealth. You have to open the tap of revenue if you want to really develop the state without taxing the people. Because one of my programs is that I will eradicate personal income tax. During my time as a governor, we call that one tax integration. There will be no personal income tax. Some of the members of the Ashiori movement from the local government reaffirmed their support for Senator Ibrahim to clinch the party's ticket. Senator Jimmo, I think he's actually very ready for this job. I think he's the most prepared, he's the most experienced, he has the capacity, and he's well ready to take this opportunity to be the next governor of the state. He has the highest network. I've done my SWOT analysis before I supported him, so I know he has the chance, the, big, the biggest chance compared to the rest of the other, other competitors. People believe in Nasheyori, people believe in Jima Ibrahim. That is why you see people in this hall today. As the APC governorship primary in Ondo State draws closer, the aspirants are putting final touches for the D-Day. Members of the Nasheyori movement continue to seek the support of other party members for Senator Jima Ibrahim, 
whom they are convinced will come out victorious in the primary. In part two after the break, I'm sorry for my comment. The Minister of Power apologizes to Nigerians for accusing them of wasting energy. Please stay with us. Now available in any color. Express your world however you want it. Visit a Dulux Color Center to get any color instantly. Dulux, let's color. Are you ready to unlock the future of healthcare? Join us at Medic West Africa, the premier medical exhibition happening at the Landmark Center in Lagos from 17th to 19th. April 2024, with over 6,000 plus attendees, 180 plus exhibitors, 32 countries represented, eight product categories, three conferences. Medic West is more than just an exhibition, it's a platform for innovation, collaboration, and learning. Don't miss your chance to connect with decision makers and professionals from various regions. All coming together over three days to shape the future of healthcare. Mark your calendars for April 17th to 19th, 2024. The Duchess International Hospital caters to every aspect of a family's health needs. A one-stop shop for maternity and child health services, emergency medicine and critical care, medical and surgical subspecialties, dental and eye care, and a range of other subspecialties and services, all available at a single location right here in the heart of Keja. And it really doesn't matter if you're paying out of pocket using your HMO or private insurance. We focus completely on providing that world-class affordable health care for all the family at all times. you can now print all your essential items for events without even having to leave your home? It's the Cast Prints Combo Deal for all events. Yes! Weddings, conferences, birthdays, burials, etc. Starting from 495,000 Naira only, you get 50 invites, 50 A2 size posters, 50 16 page brochures, one large backdrop banner, one roll up banner, 50 jotters with pens, and 50 souvenir carrier bags. Whatever event you're planning, we can adjust to your budget and quantities. Just send your pictures and other information through WhatsApp, and we shall send a design for your approval. Approve your design, and we will produce with super high quality digital print technology. We can even arrange delivery to your location. Call us now on 0913 1565. 016 or 0812-794-9323 or visit our social media pages. Cast Prints, digital printing at super speed. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10, coming to you live on Channel Television from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. More buildings to go down in Lagos Island, declares Governor Babaji de Somolu, as he vows to go after those flouting safety regulations in the business district area. It's yet another twist in river state politics as former Governor Peter Odili backs Governor Fubara, declares him political leader of the state. Residents of Emowa Council pitch tent with former Governor Nyesom Wike. The Minister of Power apologizes to Nigerians over his comments, accusing them of wasting energy by keeping their freezers and air conditioners running when not at home. And President Joe Biden promises Israel ironclad in U.S. support amid fears that Tehran could launch reprisals for an attack that killed senior Iranians.
The Nigerian Navy ship Lugard has arrested an alleged drug baron, Aliu Lawal, with 620 parcels of substance suspected to be cannabis sativa or marijuana in Kogi State. The commander, NNS Lugard Lokoja Commodore Moses Akpele, said this at the naval base headquarters in Banda of Lokoja local government area of Kogi State while handing over the suspects to NDLEA officials. He urged those in the business of illicit drugs to desist from such acts, warning that the long arm of the law will surely catch up with them. Away from crime matters, the Minister of Power, Mr. Adibaya Adilabu, has tendered an unreserved apology to Nigerians for criticizing their use of energy. While addressing a news conference in Abuja last Thursday, Mr. Adilabu accused Nigerians of wasting energy by keeping their freezers and air conditioners running even when not at home, a practice, he said, is due to cheap electricity. His comment, however, attracted criticism from citizens, but the minister, during an interview on our political program, Politics Today, Mr. Dilabu said he was sorry for what he said. It was actually an innocent advice with regard to energy consumption management, which we believe will go a long way in uh, reducing people's energy bills. And that advice was actually directed at those that we believe uh, because of the recent increase in tariff, you start enjoying 20, 22, 24 hours of uh, power supply. What I said was that uh, the fact that the tariff for band A, which is for 15% of the total uh, electricity consumers, will increase by over 200%, does not necessarily translate into 200% increase in their electricity bills if power is properly uh, managed in terms of a uh, consumption. The example of the freezer, well, he may, might not have gone down well with the majority of Nigerians. I would say, oh, sorry about that. It was never in my intention to insult anybody. Uh, it was just out of my passion and uh, my eagerness to ensure that we make a change in this sector, which has suffered a lot of uh, setback for, for some years. Meanwhile, for some residents and business owners in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, the hike in electricity tariff is a cause for concern, and they are calling for a reversal of the decision or equitable distribution of power. Our correspondent, Deborah Agbalama, visited some areas in Port Harcourt, and here's her report. On April the 3rd, the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, announced a substantial 240% increase in electricity tariffs. Despite opposition from organized labor, the federal government stands firm, defending the hike, stating that only 1.5 million out of 12 million users fall under the higher tariff category. We went out of town to see firsthand if it's true and only those enjoying 20 hours of power supply are feeling the pinch. This is a Likaya housing estate, a mixture of residential and business premises. Residents here say they get only three to four hours of power supply daily, but have noticed the hike on their prepaid meters. It, I'm not finding it funny at all because the light is not even being given like how it's supposed to be. Like we're not even satisfied with the light. Like the power supply is very, very low. This government has failed Nigeria since the arrival of the president, Tinibuti. Now nothing is going on in this country. Everything is increment, increment, increment. Electricity is important. Even we are paying, we are paying certain things. We are not getting the value. Even now, the problem is: would we pay 300 percent increment and get the value of what we are paying? That is the point. Mr. Simon Noss, a business owner around the vicinity, explains to us how electricity high bills, compounding with scanty power supply, eats deep into his profit. We are, we are spending more on fuel. Again, even with the increment itself, we don't even see the light itself. So it, uh, it also affects our cost of operation. 
The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, is making bold statements with its head of information, Benson Upa, warning of a potential showdown if tariffs aren't reverted to previous levels. Echoing this sentiment, Alex Agwomo, the NLC River State Chairman, stands firm in support of the national stance. Considering the plight of uh, the Nigerians at this period, we are people already struggling in terms of uh, the price of goods and services and uh, the high rate of inflation. Uh, government is coming with policy that will inflict more poverty, more hardship on the people. You know, it's not acceptable anywhere. I think uh, government should be concerned about the well-being of the people that are living and not bringing policy that will put them more in hardship. As residents and businesses in Port Harcourt continue to grapple with the effects of the electricity price hike, many are calling for a reversal to subsidize rates or equitable distribution of the promised 20 hours of power supply. Deborah Abalama, Channels Television News. Right, let's get some more perspective on this issue of increasing electricity tariff, which is indeed coming amid complaints by Nigerians about poor power supply in the country. Channel's television analyst, Mr. Lao Lua Konde, joins us live from our Buja studios to examine this. Great to have you on the news at 10. Uh, why has the problems in the past sector remained intractable for long? Thank you, Hayo. I, I, I think... Uh... Just like quite a number of our national challenges, we have not been able uh, to go to the root cause of uh, the major challenge in the power sector, which in my view and in the view of many of the experts is the problematic privatization sale of, uh, of, of, of the discos, especially, and the jenkos. Because what you have is a situation where those who purchased the discos uh, don't have the, uh, the technical competence, and they also lack the financial muscle to be able to invest in the business. And so there is a liquidity crisis, a clear liquidity, uh, liquidity crisis in the sector. There is no cash flow. That does not encourage investment. And, and, and the attempt to increase the tariff is, is actually uh, a way that uh, NERC uh, and, and the, the, the companies are trying to solve the liquidity crisis. So in, in my view, the main problem is that we have not looked at how can we fix the faulty privatization sale that, to, that took place uh, uh, some time ago uh, in this country. That is the fundamental problem, and it has to be addressed. All right, so there are, there, there are indeed divergent views you know, regarding the electricity tariff hike, but would you say it is justified? We talk about the, the, the band for our consumers, band A, band B, and, and, all, and all of that. Uh, what would you say uh, concerning this? Yeah, so I, I think it's important for us Nigerians to understand that now the power sector is a business, and so... Uh, there has to be a cash flow for the people in the business. I think the government has tried to explain that the recent tariff hike uh, is only for about 15% of the consumers at a particular category. The problem, however, is that the Nigerian people do not see uh, the delivery of effective service from the discourse to warrant any kind of increase. And I, like I have said, the problem that we have with the discos is that they don't have the financial model. They're not putting in the money, for instance, to fix some of their own equipment. And, and, and they are still doing estimated billing for the, for the better part. And so uh, the people don't see the services for which they pay. But quite frankly, there will be a need for some kind of resources, money coming into that sector. And government is saying, let us see how we can increase tariff for those who can pay and we can show some services. All right, it, it, I very quickly. I would also say, I would suggest that it would be useful to also find other means of bringing in resources and finances into the sector outside of tariffs. Very and there quickly. are ideas uh, already about that. So what's the way forward? Very quickly. So, 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 so I think first and foremost, uh, the, 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 we, we should have a, an all-society approach to this problem. 
namely that, look, this is a failure of both the public and private sector. The public didn't sell to the right people. The, the people who bought it couldn't run it. As a, as a matter of fact, there was a time there was insolvency. So we need to solve that problem. We need to come together and say, what are we going to do? We need new investors, okay, to come into the, into the business. And also, we need new ideas. Some people have suggested an energy fund uh, which can be used to also solve some of the liquidity crisis in the sector. And then we need the cement deal, the cement initiative, to move faster so that we can have repairs of the transmission lines and the distribution lines. These are we'll some ideas that. Uh, that can take us forward. We'll leave it at that. Now, Lock on the Channel Television Analyst, we thank you for your thoughts on the news today. Thank you, Ayo. Now, the first civilian governor of Old Abia State and former Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Ogbunaya Onu, has died. Now, Dr. Onu, who hailed from Eboy State, created partly from the Old Abia State, was an All Progressives Congress presidential aspirant in the 2023 election, is reported to have died today in a hospital in Abuja. Dr. Onu was appointed Minister of Science and Technology by former President Mohamedou Buhari in November of 2015, a position he held until he resigned in 2022 to contest for the presidential ticket of the APC at its primary, but then lost to President Bola Tinubu. Meanwhile, Governor Francis Winfuru of Eboy State has described Dr. Onu's death as sad, saying he was a thoroughbred politician and an advocate of justice and fairness, who stopped at nothing at rendering best services to his people. In the meantime, the president has been paying tribute to the former federal minister and extending his condolences to the Onu family. In a statement, President Bola Tinubu described him as a luminous star in Nigeria's political firmament and a principal draughtsman in the founding of the APC and a valiant partner in the victory of the party in the 2015 elections. The president further celebrates him as an accomplished scholar, first-class engineer, a man of proven integrity and ever yielding to the highest standards of rectitude. President Tinubu affirms that Chief Onu epitomizes Nigeria as he believed in and defended Nigeria's unity advocated peace and promoted fellowship across the Niger. Still ahead on the news at 10, OPEC's latest report shows Nigeria's crude oil production fell for the second straight month to 1.23 million barrels per day in March. That's in business news. Please join us again. Investing in the capital market can be tricky as the numbers move in different directions. Sometimes the bull bellows, other times it's the beer that pours. In all of these, an investment decision has to be made. On Capital Market, we help you take the right decision. Join us at 7 p.m. every Saturday, only on Channels Television. Capital Market, investment tips for you. The art and creative community is mourning the death of one of its own, a Nollywood actor, Pope Obumneme, who drowned in River Anam in Anambra State on Wednesday after shooting a movie at a location. The Nigerian movie actor, popularly known as Junior Pope, reportedly died on his way back from a movie location alongside some persons yet to be confirmed after their speedboat capsized in the river. Reacting to the incident, the Minister of Art, Culture and Creative Economy, Hanatu Musawa, has expressed deep shock over the tragic occurrence, which comes barely 48 hours after the death of a Carnywood actress, Saratu Gidadu. Minister Musawa, in a statement, described the spate of deaths in the entertainment industry as horrific and tragic, saying it's a sad week for the creatives and movie industry, losing great young talents and entertainment providers. So let's head to the nation's capital and Victoria Long John is standing by to give us the very latest from our Abuja studios. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Ayo. We continue here with Plateau State as displaced persons in over 100 communities and parts of the state are to be resettled in their ancestral homes before the farming season commences. The state task force saddled with the responsibility is assuring the internally displaced persons of speedy resettlement to their various communities, especially in areas of security and reconstruction of destroyed homes. 
the Task Force on Resettlement of Internally Displaced Persons, set up by the Plateau State Government, has commenced on the support assessment and interactive sessions with victims of attacks affected across 121 communities of Mangu, Riom, Bokos, and Barkin Ladi local government areas of Plateau State. Some displaced persons have started returning, though with some anxiety, and they urge governments to speedily commence the resettlement agenda. We are very impressed and we, we hope that the government will hasten up so that our people will come back because this is a famine season. There are so many challenges, but we will plead if they will make special consignment as per fertilizer for all the areas that have been affected and particularly are making a case for my people. The chairman of the task force led the team to Mangu for the assessment and to review preparations for the resettlement, where over 67 communities were affected. It will be done in phases. The immediate assignment now is to return those that we can provide security for them to start working on their farms. Another team led by the vice chairman visited Bokos, where 53 communities were assessed. And part of the issues were also looking out for also a part of the amenities that they also that would that they were required to stay comfortably. We're looking at their worship centers, we're looking at the water points, we're also looking out for clinics and their schools. The transition committee chairman of Bokos local government area expressed confidence that the displaced persons will soon be resettled. We are we are in, we are engaging the state government to see that we uh, pull resources together so that uh, we will uh, give this displaced person's sense of belonging. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. As the process for resettlement of internally displaced persons across the affected communities commences, government is expected to put in place necessary measures that will facilitate the resettlement of the affected persons. Over to Balchi State now, where Governor Bala Mohammed says he will put aside political differences and collaborate with the federal government despite being in opposition for the sake of the state's development. The governor said this during the annual Durban event held at the government house in Balchi, where he announced plans to improve the state's health facilities with federal assistance. Our correspondent, Hajara Ali, reports. The Bochi Emirates, consisting of kingmakers, council members, traditional title holders, and district heads, are paying traditional salah homage to the governor. This year marks the 110th Durban event since its inception in 1914 during the colonial administration, known as Hawambariki. The festival takes place a day after the Eid celebration at the government house. <laughs> The Emir of Bochi, along with other eminent personalities, are here at the new Grand Arena built by the governor to watch the processions as the Madaki of Bochi leads the lineup of the procession. Hunters. Warriors and horse riders display their gallantry and style. The event showcases the traditional regalia with beautifully adorned horses as traditional music and dance performances add to the splendor of the Daba, aimed at thrilling spectators. Event, the governor receives greetings from each of the 55 processions. Various ethnic groups residing in Bochi also pay homage, demonstrating the festival's unifying nature. Speaking in Hausa, the Emir of Bochi expresses deep appreciation to the governor for his leadership. Your Excellency, I wish to appeal to you to continue with the developmental strides 
especially in the areas of education and health care and other things that make life better for the people. Governor Mohammed, in turn, pledges to continue partnering with the federal government for the development of the state as he announces new projects in the offing. Our hospital projects are continuing and we are going to build more. More schools. We have declared emergency on education. We have accessed a lot of funding from development partners. We are very, very grateful. The Galadima of Bochi's procession marks the end of the processions and signals the peak of the events, the Emir's procession. <laughs> As the Emir leaves the podium and back to the arena on horseback, accompanied by palace guards and elements of royalty, he greets the governor to pay homage before departing the government house for the palace. Hajara Aliyu, Channels Television News. And the need to infuse right values and reimagine in order to reposition oneself has come to the fore at a gathering of youths in Lagos for the maiden edition of the Lagos Conference courtesy of the Young Professionals Club. The event provided a platform for notable personalities to offer useful advice to the younger generation on how to navigate life's rough path without compromising standards. This is the first edition of the Lagos Conference put together by the young professionals and is geared towards re-emphasizing value repositioning among the youths in Nigeria. These young professionals are reminded that they can realize their dreams if they are diligent despite the high level of moral decadence, especially among young people, as there is an urgent need for value reorientation. For us to change the culture we have now, we need to do more than prayer. Am I talking? We need to do more than what? We have to insist on doing what is right. Whether in the ways of God or in the ways of life, but that you will be an influencer of value, that you will be an impact enhancer, that you will be a life that creates value in other lives around you. Values that lead people up and not lead them down. That you yourself will be that vessel and you will invest in it. After the opening formalities, the conference then goes into another session as panelists shed more light on the thrust of the events. I want to tell the young professionals that the purpose and objective of a mentor cannot be overemphasized in your journey of life. He has forced you to avoid the costly mistakes, the twists and turns that by sheer grace and tenacity, these people have overcome. One of the things that define you are those things you can say no to. Um, the same way, one of the things that define you in life, or part of the things that define you in life, are those things you don't have, and you aspire to it just tells what exactly your mindset is. For these young leaders, one sure way of making Nigeria work is through the infusion of the right values. Many people think about what they want to get rather than what they can give, and that's why it's important for us to bring together young people into this place and have people who have gone through that cycle of value-driven successes to speak to them, show them that you can succeed without having to go through a crooked path. If you have the right persons with the right values sitting in the right offices, the Project Nigeria will be like the success story of the corporate world, even in Nigeria. Submissions by different speakers at the 2024 Lagos Conference organized by the Young Professionals is an indication that Nigeria can attain more enviable heights if the right values are inculcated by citizens, especially the youth. And that's it from Abuja. It's now over to Will Ibong for Business News. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. <laughs>
Thank you, Victoria, and welcome to Business News. Nigeria's crude oil production has recorded its second consecutive drop this year from 1.32 million barrels per day in February to 1.23 million barrels in March. And that's according to OPEC's latest monthly oil market report. The 92,000 barrels per day decline recorded in March brings the total loss for the two months to about 196,000 barrels per day. Now, looking at the chart for Africa's top oil producers within OPEC, Libya narrowly overtakes Nigeria with about 1.24 million barrels per day produced in March. Meanwhile, Nigeria's oil rig count rose by three in March, climbing to 19 from February's count of 16. Now, the chairman of Boer Group, Samad Rabiu, has commended the steps being taken by the federal government, even as he advised Nigerians to be patient, as reforms take time. The businessman was speaking after he paid a visit to President Bola Tumbu in Lagos. Also speaking after a separate meeting with the president, the group CEO of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, Melikiari, said significant improvements have occurred in the country's petroleum market. We all need to come together and uh, support the government, support their policies. You know, the government means well, you know, clearly, and they are trying to support Nigeria, but we need to be patient. You know, these reforms take time, without a doubt. It's not easy. It's not something that uh, can be done within in one day. So we are working together with the government, especially now that the president has you know, established, you know, this committee, you know, between the government and the private sector. So we're working together, we're supporting each other, we're advising the government, and the government is listening. That is very, very important. The fact that the government is listening, you know, means so much, you know, to the private sector. And I think we'll get, you know, to the desired land. It's also a perfect opportunity to reassure Mr. President that his focus on delivering gas into our markets, both domestic and international market, bringing back prosperity to our country, is right on course, and this is a, a task that will be delivered, and very many obvious things will, will unfold in the coming weeks. It is very clear that our, our majority of our exports from this country is petroleum as of today that can earn uh, foreign currency. There's significant improvement in the markets in terms of pricing, and also we're able to establish some level of stability in our project. The combination of this is bringing additional resources available to our country. And of course, more than anything, there are clear monetary and fiscal policies that the president and this government has put in place that is working, and that is bringing about all the changes that you are seeing in the currency market. Now, staying with the economy, the Debt Management Office, DMO, says it plans to raise 450 billion naira in its upcoming bond auction on April the 15th. This target is part of the DMO's broader strategy to generate up to 1.8 trillion naira through federal government bonds in the second quarter of 2024. The auction will offer 150 billion naira for each of the following bonds the newly issued FGN April 2029 five year bond, the reopened 2031 seven year bond, and the 2034 10-year bond. In the first quarter of this year, the DMO raised about 2.39 trillion naira through FGN bonds, with the largest issuance recorded in February. Still speaking of raising funds, FBN Holdings PLC has announced its plans to raise up to 300 billion naira through public offerings, private placements, and rights issued this year. In a statement sent to the Nigerian Exchange Limited NGX, the listed financial services group says the capital raise would be from either the domestic or international capital markets. It added that the planned raise is subject to approval by the re regulatory authorities and its shareholders at an extraordinary general meeting to be held later in the month. Now, outside our shores, the European Central Bank, ECB, has kept interest rates steady at 4% for the fifth consecutive meeting, but strongly hints at an imminent rate cut amid uncertainties about the U.S. Federal Reserve's actions. In its statement, the ECB stressed the importance of factors like inflation outlook, underlying dynamics, and monetary policy transmission. June is now seen as a critical month with expectations mounting for potential rate reductions. Meanwhile, the European markets closed lower on Thursday after the ECB held rates steady at a record high of 4%. On the flip side, we saw a rebound in the U.S. markets. Let's check out the numbers and the performance of other major stocks markets around the world.
And that's business news. It's back to IOT today for the rest of the news at 10. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Will. Former American football starter and actor O.J. Simpson has died after a battle with cancer. The 76-year-old became popular in the 1990s for his controversial trial and acquittal over the double murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. Here's Simon Pusey with other international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. President Joe Biden has promised Israel ironclad U.S. support amid fears that Tehran could launch reprisals for an attack that killed senior Iranians. We also want to address the Iranian threat. Mr. Biden warned that Iran is threatening to launch a significant attack after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria 10 days ago. Earlier, Iran's leader said the Israeli attack in Damascus was the equivalent to an attack on Iran itself. It is unclear what form any reprisal attack would take. To launch a significant, they're threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. A major power plant near Kyiv has been completely destroyed by Russian strikes early on Thursday. That's according to the energy company Centenergo. Tripila power plant was the largest provider of electricity for three regions, including Kyiv. Russia has long been deliberately and systematically targeting Ukraine's energy system. The strikes are thought to have destroyed the transformer, the turbines and the generators. The Centenergo boss said the plant was targeted by multiple missiles. Staff on shift were able to escape, he said, because they ran for cover as soon as the first drone hit. It was the most spectacular trial ever held in Vietnam, benefiting one of the greatest bank frauds the world has ever seen. 67-year-old Truong Mi Lan was convicted of taking out $44 billion in loans from the Saigon Commercial Bank. The verdict requires her to return $27 billion, as some prosecutors said may never be recovered. Some believe the death penalty is the court's way of trying to encourage her to return some of the missing billions. At least 17 Pakistani pilgrims have died in a bus crash while travelling to a shrine in Balochistan for Eid. The accident occurred when the vehicle lost control before falling into a ravine. More than 40 are also being treated for injuries in Karachi and police have warned casualties could rise. High fatality crashes are common in Pakistan, often caused by driver error or poorly maintained roads. At least 100 Russians have asked Vladimir Putin for help in a city struck by the worst flooding ever recorded, chanting shame on you at local officials who they said had done too little to help their plight. Russia declared an emergency in the Orenburg region near Kazakhstan after the Ural River, Europe's third longest river, swelled several meters in hours and burst through a dam embankment in the city of Orsk. With their properties either destroyed or severely damaged, many people are unhappy with the compensation offered by authorities. Some are also unhappy that the dam embankment built in 2010 was unable to defend their city. Stunning artworks have been uncovered in a new excavation at Pompeii, the ancient Roman city buried in an eruption from Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. Archaeologists say the frescoes are among the finest to be found in the ruins of the ancient site. Mythical Greek figures such as Helen of Troy are depicted on the high black walls of a large banqueting hall. The room's near complete mosaic floor incorporates more than a million individual white tiles. Pompeii is a, uh, a city of horrible stories for the people. Not for the houses, for the frescoes, for, for the object, but for the people, yeah. We start to study the reconstruction of the story of these people to give them a new memory. Only in Pompeii you can see the life of the people, of the Roman people. 
And French athlete Anouk Garnier has attempted to break the rope climbing record by climbing a 110 meter rope to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower. She reached her goal in just 18 minutes. The two time world obstacle course champion trained for a year before attempting the climb. Her record has not yet been validated by the Guinness Book of World Records, but she said this did not take away from her accomplishment. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. The Confederation of African Football Cup is expected to make a statement on the kickoff date for this year's Africa Women's Cup of Nations that will be hosted by Morocco. Speaking to Channels Television in London, CAF Executive Committee member Amaju Pinnick confirmed it is on the top agenda for discussion at next week's meeting in Morocco. After that, I can be authoritative. But for now, I don't think I have the locus to speak on that okay give me a background why did we get into this situation because we never have this sort of problem with the men i cannot give you a background because of issues in calf there's a modicum of philosophy that has to do with privacy in terms of issues like this it's quite sensitive until we discuss it and the appropriate authorities in calf should come out and speak on it unless there's a panic you can go and speak on it I cannot, with all due respect. The women's football is a major priority for CAF. It, we introduced the Champions League for women, and we have started it, and we are not slowing down. The English Premier League will use semi-automated -autom offside technology before the end of the year. Clubs unanimously agree to introduce the technology next season at a meeting of top flight teams earlier today, and its implementation is expected to cut the average length of a VAR check for offside by 30 seconds. Semi-automated offside is already used in the Champions League and Serie A. While not exactly the same system, it was also used at the World Cup in Qatar in 2022. Gianluca Marchini gave Roma a slender advantage in tonight's Europa League quarterfinal with AC Milan after netting the only goal in a 1-0 win at the San Siro. Jonas Hoffman and Victor Boniface scored after coming off the bench as Bayern Leverkusen beat West Ham 2-0 at home. Atlanta stunned Anfield as Gianluca Scamacca uh, scored twice in a 3-0 win to leave Liverpool with a mountain to climb to reach the Europa League semi-finals. That's it on sports. It's back to you, Ayotinde. Many thanks, Chris. The chairman of Dangote Group, Mr. Aliko Dangote, says the significant reduction in the diesel price by his refinery will have a positive effect on Nigeria's inflation rate. He made this known on Wednesday during the briefing with journalists following his homage visit to President Bola Tinubu for the Idel Fitri in Lagos. One of the major issues that we've had was the, uh, you know, the NERA devaluation that was actually that has gone very aggressive up to about 1,900, but right now we're back to almost 1,250, 1,300, which is a good, uh, you know, reprieve. And uh, you can see quite a lot of uh, things have actually gone. Even people now, when you go to the market, for example, uh, something that will produce locally, like uh, a four or whatever, people will charge you more. Why? Because they are paying very high prices on diesel. And what we did, for example, in our refinery, we started selling even diesel at about 1,200 for 1,650. But that can help quite a lot because if you are transporting locally produced goods, rice and other stuff, you are paying 1,650. Now you are paying two-thirds of that amount to 1,200. It's a lot of uh, difference. You know, people don't know. That can actually help to bring inflation down immediately. And I'm sure when the inflation figures are out for the next month, you see that there's quite a lot of improvement in the uh, uh, inflation uh, you know, rate. So 
step at a time, and I'm sure you know the bank. I mean, the government is working around the clock to make sure that things get much better because it is in their it is in their own interest. It's in the interest of everybody for Nigerians to get things better. And the main news again. Governor Babajide Sonwolu today said more buildings will have to go down in Lagos Island as he vowed to go after those flouting safety regulations in the business district area. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Do have a good night. Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Entertainment News on Channels Television.